Jesus never said, I am God, worship me. Where in the world did Jesus say, I am God? If you can show me in your Bible where Jesus says, I am God, then I will believe it. In fact, I encountered this particular argument from a Muslim um, at, a, at a debate a few years ago up at Cal Poly Pomona. Um, it was a debate between uh, Christians and Muslims on the topic, Jesus, prophet, or God. And at the end of the debate, uh, the, the, uh, there was an open mic question and answer period. And the very first question asked was by the leader of the Muslim Student Association at that time. He, he gets up to the microphone and he says, Mr. Rittenhouse, John Rittenhouse was the Christian debater. He says, Mr. Rittenhouse, show me in your Bible, show me in the New Testament where Jesus says, I am God. If you can show me where Jesus says, I am God, then I will believe it. But Jesus never claimed to be God. Show me where Jesus says, I am God. Well, come on, ask, answer me. Does, does Jesus ever say, I am God, using those words like Muslims want him to? Do we see that in the Bible? No, we don't. But Jesus, does Jesus ever claim to be God? Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Let, let, I'm going to show you four areas where Jesus actually claims to be God, and he does so using divine titles. First one. Up here on the screen, you can see it. Where, where does Jesus claim to be God? Well, every time he uses the phrase, the Son of Man, he's claiming divinity. How do we know that that phrase, the Son of Man, refers to God? Well, it actually has its, has its roots, it has, has its origins back in, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter seven. Daniel seven, verses 13 and 14, Daniel says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one which shall not be destroyed. So this term, the son of man, that Daniel is referring to is one who's gonna be coming on the clouds of heaven. One who is called the Ancient of Days. Well, who's that? The Ancient of Days, coming on the clouds of heaven, that's a divine title. Um, it says, he's, whoever, hit, whoever this the son of man is has dominion over all nations, peoples, tongues, and languages. That is a divine title, and the Jews knew that. The Jews recognized that that is a divine title. So whenever Jesus claims to be the son of man, he's claiming a title of divinity. Does Jesus ever claim to be the son of man? Oh yeah, he does, absolutely. In fact, the Son of Man is the title that he, that he gives to himself probably more than any other title in the, in the New Testament. For example, just in, in, the, uh, in the first few verses of, of Matthew, he, gives him, he, he claims that title in Matthew 8, verse 20, Matthew 9, 6, Matthew 12, 8, Matthew 12, 40, Matthew 16, 13, Matthew 16, 27, and on and on and on it goes. The Son of Man is the title that Jesus uses for himself more than any other title. And when he claims to be the son of man, we're gonna see it again in a moment, he's claiming to be God. The Jews understood that. So anytime Jesus says the son of man or, or refers to himself as the son of man, he's claiming to be God based on Daniel chapter seven, verses 13 and 14. Whenever Jesus claims to be the I am, I am, ego I me in Greek, he's claiming to be God. Where do we get this from? From Exodus chapter three. Remember, Moses is up on the mountain. He's, he's up on the mountain and, and God's telling him, telling Moses that you're gonna lead my people out of captivity in Egypt. And Moses says, well, when I go back down the mountain and I tell them the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham has sent me to you, has sent me as, as a rescuer to, to lead you out of, out of Egypt. Moses asked God, he says, who shall I say sent them? He says, what is your name? Moses asked God, what is your name? What does God say? Remember what he says? God says, tell them the I, that I am, I am that I am sent you, I am. Ego eimi, as it's translated in the Greek, in the Greek New Testament. Anytime Jesus claims to be the I am, he is claiming the unique self-identifying title that God gave Moses back in Exodus chapter three, verses 13 to 15. So anytime Jesus says, I am, does Jesus ever claim to be I am? Oh yeah, he does, many, many times. Remember John 8, chapter 54, or John chapter 8, verse 54, 54 to 56. We read, Jesus says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say, he is your God. 
Yet you have not known him, but I know him. If I say I don't know him, I shall be a liar like you, but I, I do know him and I keep his word. Verse 56, Jesus says, your father Abraham, he's talking to the Pharisees, remember this? Jesus says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Remember what the Pharisees' re response was? The Jews said to him, you're not even 50 years old. Do you claim to see an Abraham? Who do you think you are? <coughs> Verse 58, Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. I am, Jesus was claiming to be God himself. Jesus was claiming to be alive during the time of Abraham. How could he do that? Because he was God. He says, before Abraham was, I am. He claimed to be God. The seven great I am's that scholars say are, are divine titles where Jesus claims for himself. I am the bread of life, John 6, 35. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. I am the door, John 10, 9. I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11. I am the resurrection and life, John eleven twenty five. 25. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. And finally, I am the true vine, John 15, 1. So anytime Jesus claims any of these titles I am, he's claiming to be God. How do we know that? Because the Jews recognized that he was claiming to be God. Why? Because they, stuck, they took up stones to stone him. What were they gonna stone him for? Remember? John 10. <coughs> Remember what they said in John 10? Jesus says, I've done many good works for you. For which of these good works do you stone me? The Jews said, we don't stone you for good works, but because you claiming, to, you being a man, you claim to be God. The Jews understood exactly what Jesus was claiming, claiming to be. Whether Muslims grasp that today or not is irrelevant. The Jews understood what he was claiming to be. He was claiming to be God. He was saying, I am God, but just not in the words that Muslims want him to use. It's very clear who Jesus was claiming to be. So anytime Jesus claims to be the Son of Man, he's claiming, claiming to be God. Anytime he uses the divine title, I am, he's claiming to be God. What other, what other evidence do we have? Does Jesus claim the power to forgive sin? Yes, he does. Who alone can forgive sin but God, right? But yet Jesus forgave sin, didn't he? We see this, we see this uh, <clears throat> story, which you guys are all familiar with, in Mark chapter 9, or Matthew chapter 9, Mark chapter 2, and Luke chapter 5 where Jesus claims the power to forgive sin. Remember the story of the paralytic man who's brought before Jesus. There's, there's a great crowd gathered around Jesus and, and these men are trying to get this paralytic man who's laid out flat on the mat at the foot of Jesus. They can't get him past a crowd. So they go up on the roof of the house and, and they lower this man on a mat and, and lower him to the foot of Jesus, the feet of Jesus. And Jesus has compassion on the man and, and he looks down at the man. And we find the, the, we pick up the story in Luke chapter five. Verse 20 says, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 21, the scribes and Pharisees began to reason saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Right? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But here's Jesus claiming to forgive the sins of this man. Verse 22, but when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sin, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Now, what was Jesus doing here? He was actually demonstrating that he has the authority for, to forgive sin. Who can forgive sin but God alone? That's right. This is the question that the Pharisees asked in themselves. Remember, in verse, in verse 21, who speaks these blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? I wish Jesus at that time had said, yes, that's right, you got it. You understand, that's exactly who I'm claiming to be. Who can, for, who can forgive sin but God alone? That's right, it's me, I'm God. See, this is what Jesus was doing. But what else do we recognize here? What, what Jesus was doing was he was actually demonstrating that he has the authority to, authority to forgive sin because he is God. Now, follow me along with this. I, I, I like to draw this analogy to kind of help you understand what's going on here. If I were to say to you, if I were to go up to, 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 um, to John right here and say, John, I'm a multimillionaire. I got, I got $10 million in the bank. <laughs> what do you think about that? Look at me. What reason do you have to believe me? 
Do you have any reason to believe me at all just based on my words? My words are empty words. Until I can provide you evidence to back up what I claim with my words, you have no reason to believe me. So when I tell you that I've got $10 million in the bank, you're gonna want some evidence to before you believe me. So I might, as, as proof of, of evidence, as, as proof of, of my words, I might bring you my bank account and show you. See, right, it says right here, $10 million. See, it's right there in black and white from this bank. There's my bank, there's my, there's my statement. See, I've got the money. Or I might take you down to the local Maserati dealer you know, and shell out a couple hundred thousand cash to buy you a Maserati. But somehow you're going to want evidence to substantiate my words in order for my words to be believable. Other than, be, without evidence, my words are meaningless. My words are empty words. They're nothing more than empty words. And so this is what Jesus was encountering when he tells this man who's laid out before him, son, your sins are forgiven you. To the scribes and the Pharisees, those are nothing more than empty words. What reason, do, what, what other reason would they have to believe that those, those, that man's sins had actually been forgiven? Empty words. So in order to provide proof, in order to back up his claim that the man's sons had been forgiven, this is why Jesus says, this is why he says to the scribes and Pharisees, which is easier to say? Son, your sins are forgiven you? Or to rise up and take up your bed and walk? Well, certainly it's easier to say your sins are forgiven you. Just like it's easy for me to say I'm, I've got $10 million, if I don't have to provide any evidence to back it up, I can say anything I want. I can make any claim I want. But the believability, the proof in my claim comes in providing evidence to substantiate it. So when Jesus says, which is easier, easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or rise up, take up your bed and walk, certainly it would have been easier for him to say, son, your sins are forgiven you. That's why Jesus takes it a step further and not only makes the claim, but offers proof as evidence to back it up. He says, which is easy, easier to say, you son, your sins are forgiven you, or rise up and take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go home. And that's exactly what the man did. So Jesus not only provided the, the verbal evidence, he not only provided the, the verbal claim, he backed it up with evidence to substantiate, to provide evidence that he was making an authoritative claim. Don't ever let Muslims get away with saying Jesus never claimed to be God. Anytime he claims to be the son of man, anytime he claims the divine title, I am, anytime he claims the, the power to forgive sin, he's claiming to be God. Finally, when Jesus says, but I say to you, anytime Jesus makes the claim, I say to you, he's claiming to be God. Why? Because when the Old Testament prophets were beginning to make a prophecy on behalf of God, when they were making a prophetic announcement, remember how they would begin their prophetic announcement? What would they say? They would say, thus says who? Thus says the Lord. Does Jesus ever say, thus says the Lord? Does he ever use those words? No, he doesn't. Why? What does he say? He says, I say to you. Why? Because he doesn't have to say, thus says the Lord. He's not speaking on behalf of God. He is speaking as God in the first person present tense. Does Jesus ever say, I say to you? Yeah, over and over and over again. You have heard it said of old, you shall not commit murder. But I say to you, anybody who is even angry with his brother, you have heard it said of old, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you. You have heard it said that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality, but I say to you, over and over and over again, Jesus says, I say to you. Anytime Jesus says, I say to you, he is claiming to be God. He's speaking on behalf of God in the first pers person, present tense. <clears throat> So does Jesus ever say, I am God, in the words Muslims want him to use? Nope. But he certainly claims to be God multiple times in multiple ways. And there's no doubt in anyone's mind, at least in, in, in the minds of the Jews at, at his time, who he was claiming to be. By, I mean, come on, they picked up stones to stone him because he was claiming to be God. If Muslims can't recognize that today, that's not a problem with the scripture that's a problem with the Muslim mindset. They don't want to believe that Jesus claimed to be God, and yet the Jews understood exactly what he was claiming for himself. 